Ms. Correa was last seen by her friends at a, outside a nightclub in Boston at about 2 a.m. on Sunday, February 24th. After she was reported missing, Boston police reviewed surveillance camera footage for the surrounding area, which showed Ms. Correa on the sidewalk at 2.14 a.m. A man later identified as Lewis Coleman approaches her, interacts with her, and leaves with her, the two of them walking to his red sedan. Boston police were able to retrieve an image of Coleman's driver's license from the nightclub and match it to the man seen with Correa outside the club. The driver's license address was for an apartment in Providence, Rhode Island. Providence police reviewed security camera footage for the apartment complex, which showed that about 4.25 a.m. on Sunday, so about two hours later, Coleman arrived at the complex and carried a body from his car into the building and to his apartment. The body matches the description of Ms. Correa. Once in the building, video shows Coleman carrying the body to his apartment door. Camera footage also showed that on Tuesday, February 26, Coleman left the apartment and returned with Walmart shopping bags. Boston and Providence officers located a nearby Walmart and reviewed security camera footage, confirming that Coleman had been there and had made several purchases in the store. The receipt for Coleman's purchases obtained from the store that day showed that he bought three Tyvek suits, duct tape, two candles, electrical tape, a mask, surgical gloves, safety goggles, an odor respirator, and bleach. Again, based on camera footage, the next evening, Wednesday, February 27th, Coleman entered his apartment building with what looks like a large new suitcase. You can see the tags on it in the video. A few hours later, it now being Thursday, uh, February 28th, at 1.15 a.m., Coleman is seen wheeling that suitcase away from his apartment to the elevator and then out of the building to his car where he hoists it into his trunk. It appears to bear some weight. At least based on camera footage, between Coleman arriving at his apartment at about 4 a.m. on Sunday and leaving at about 1 a.m. on Thursday, February 28th, Miss Correa does not leave the apartment. Providence police searched Coleman's apartment on Thursday, February 28th, where they found two packages of hooded coveralls and two respirator masks, among other things. They also noted that a cover was missing from one of the cushions on um, Mr. Coleman's couch. In a dumpster outside, they found trash bags, plastic sheets, and other cleaning materials. Later Thursday afternoon, Coleman's sedan was located and stopped on I-95 South near Wilmington, Delaware. Delaware State Police made the stop. It appears the stop was uneventful. We've seen it reported that there was a high-speed chase. That is not correct. According to the complaint affidavit for the charges brought today, when asked if anyone else was in the car with him, Coleman said, she's in the trunk, or words to that effect. In the trunk, troopers discovered a body wrapped in a sofa cushion cover. Inside a black trash bag, inside a suitcase matching the one Coleman was seen bringing into his apartment. The victim was naked, bruised, bound in gray duct tape, and covered in what is believed to be baking soda, and the body matches the description of Miss Jassy Correa. Some press, press outlets have reported that the body was mutilated or dismembered. That is not true. Though, other items found in the car did include a duffel bag, a new pair of long-handled loppers, that heavy tool used to cut down thick branches, a new pair of pliers, garbage bags, a new gas canister, a butane lighter, safety glasses, work towels and work gloves, and disinfectant wipes, among other things. At booking in Delaware, Coleman was asked about a bandage he had on his right cheek. He is alleged to have said, it's from the girl, or words to that effect. He is now in custody in Delaware and should soon appear in federal court on this new federal charge. Uh, the charge in our case is kidnapping resulting in death. This charge carries a sentence of mandatory life and is also death penalty eligible. Today's charges are the result of a tremendous amount of law enforcement work done in a very short time, most of that work not done by federal authorities. First and foremost, Coleman was identified 
and so ultimately caught because of the professionalism and dedication of the Boston Police Department. Once he was identified, Boston Police alerted the Providence Police Department, which immediately responded and gathered crucial evidence from the apartment complex and elsewhere. The FBI rendered assistance to Boston and Providence authorities throughout this period. Through assistance from the United States Marshal Service and the Delaware State Police, the defendant was found and stopped in that state. Once caught, the Suffolk County District Attorney's Office, the Rhode Island Attorney General's Office, and the Rhode Island United States Attorney's Office and this office all coordinated to see where and how best to charge this multi-jurisdictional case. Federal charges are being brought because of the multi-state nature of the crime and the penalties available in federal court. And they're being brought here because Ms. Correa was from here, was taken from here. And so justice should be done here, if at all possible. I think District Attorney Rollins put it best the other day when she said that Ms. Correa was part of our community. Her family is part of our community. And while we cannot bring her back, at least we can give the measure of comfort that doing justice here can provide. So with that, I'd like to thank all the law enforcement partners who were involved in the investigation of this case. Genuinely a team effort pursued in the public interest. And this is what you'll see in the future. Rapid, unhesitating cooperation between the various state and federal authorities who keep the public safe here and in the region. With that, I'll turn things over to Boston Police Commissioner Willie Ross. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your patience. As you've heard from the U.S. Attorney, um, we're all working together collaboratively to bring justice to the Korea family on behalf of their loved one, Jassy. I can't tell you how upsetting this is. As I've talked to folks um, across the city, everyone has loved ones in their family, daughters, nieces, um, and this is just a horrible tragedy for the family. On behalf of Mayor Walsh and the men and women of the Boston Police Department, we extend our most sincere condolences to the Correa family um, for the loss of their loved one. But as well, we want to send a message to the Correa family, as well as the folks in the city of Boston, that the collaborative that you see here before you will work this case until the very end, and we will bring justice um, for Jassy. There are lessons to be learned here, but as I uh, stated in a press conference with D.A. Rollins, we're not going to play the blame game here. We know what lessons there are out there to be learned, but one thing um, that we should be cognizant of is that if we all begin to look out for each other as a city, um, then we can ensure that we're going to send a message to predators and hunters that people are watching you and that we're not going to tolerate this in our city. And before I leave, um, just as the U.S. Attorney did, I'd just like to thank everyone. And folks, I'm going to tell you right now, um, the Boston Police Department, um, we haven't slept in like three days. Um, from when Jassy was reported missing, from the district attorney, excuse me, from the district um, detectives from the area A1, B2, and D4, uh, all led by Superintendent Paul Donovan, Donovan, as well as Deputy Eddings and Deputy Dotton. Everybody was on this case. Um, as the evidence led us from downtown to Providence, um, we also incorporated the help of our Special Investigations Unit, our Fugitive Unit, and as the investigation proceeded, our top investigators from the Homicide Unit. And our Boston Regional Intelligence Center was instrumental. But what's key is what you see before you hear today, in that the Boston Police Department did not act alone. Um, we had a partnership in place, and that partnership has really paid off <coughs> with the U.S. Attorney, District Attorney Rollins, Rollins um, as well as Senior Agent in Charge, Juana Valanta, and um, my brother in Providence, Colonel Clements, U.S. Marshal Gibbons, this is what you see. A serious team 
this hell bent on justice because no family should ever, ever have to go through this again. And again, together, we're going to send a clear cut message. This is not going to be tolerated. And if you're even thinking about it, look at the folks up here on this stage. There are many, many great people that work with us. And um, we, we have your backs out there.